Okay, everyone, um, Hadi's going to go ahead and join, and then I'm going to introduce them, and we're going to give them a big round of applause. Oh, did you start it? Um, Okay, everyone, uh, welcome to the Tech Chat with Hadi Partovi. Uh, it's our last day of Computer Science Education Week, so we're really excited to have him here and all of you to answer his, uh, your questions. So why don't we go ahead and give him a big round of applause. Would you like to say anything before we jump into questions? Sure. I just want to say it's welcome. Thank you for that round of applause. And it's just been an amazing week. Uh, you know, around the entire country and around the entire world, classrooms are doing the Hour of Code. Uh, and it's, it's amazing to see how this movement that just started literally two years ago has gotten to the point of complete worldwide uh, spread. You know, in, in the United States, one out of every three schools is participating in the Hour of Code. Uh, but beyond the United States, there's entire countries who are doing it. In Italy and in Russia, every single school is doing the Hour of Code. And then in places like Nigeria or Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, places where there's wars going on, uh, people are doing the Hour of Code. There's islands, you know, in the Indian Ocean, there's a small island called Cocos Island where every single inhabitant, every person on the island is doing the Hour of Code. It's unbelievable to have started something two and a half years ago that has picked up so much in terms of worldwide spread, and everybody believes that learning the basics of computer science is something all of our students need some access to. Uh, it's so fun to be doing this. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. OK, uh, so thanks, Hadi. We're going to go to our first school, Emerson Elementary in Texas. Ask a question. How how different is coding today versus coding a few years ago? That's a great question. So the question is, how much has coding changed today versus a few years ago? You know, if you look be two years ago, three years ago, it hasn't changed very much. But if you go back 10 or 20 years, it's changed a whole lot. Uh, those of you who are doing the drag and drop, sort of dragging the commands, whether it's on tablets or on computers where you're not actually typing, uh, the drag and drop method of coding has only been around a little bit more than 10 years, uh, and that makes it so much easier to learn. Uh, you know, before that, anybody who had to code needed to jump stru straight in into typing. And it's not that the typing is hard, but it's, uh, it's much easier to make mistakes, because if you spell something just a little bit wrong, uh, the computer doesn't recognize it, whereas when you're dragging and dropping, it's easier. And before you had, to, you had a chance to type you know, 30, 40 years ago, computers didn't even have keyboards. The only thing they had was little readers that you would put a piece of cardboard into. This is before I was born. Uh, but, you know, there would be little pieces of cards, and people would actually punch holes in them and put that little piece of card into The computer would find the holes, and those holes would represent ones or zeros, and that would tell the computer what the program was. That was way, way harder. Uh, but and it's become easier. Every year it's going to become a little bit easier. So 20 years from now, it'll be much, much easier than it is today. Great. Um, our next school is Clayton Elementary from Canada. Go ahead, Mike. What made you want to create the Hour of Code? Um, so I didn't 
you know, want to create the Hour of Code. It's more like how did the idea come about? Uh, you know, uh, I started Code.org because I it, myself had such a great, I think, career in the tech industry, and I felt like I was so lucky that I got a chance to be even doing this. You know, when I started coding, I lived in the country of Iran, and I grew up there during a war, which was really not a great place to be raising a child. Uh, but my, my dad brought, gave me a computer one day, and it didn't have any games on it. And he said, here's a book. And if you can learn how to read the book, you can figure out how to code and make your own games and apps. And because I got it by the time our family came to America, even though we didn't have very many, I was really good at coding. And that helped me get some of the best jobs. And I'm considered to be the American dream. And I started Code.org because I realized in most schools, it's now 30 since I started learning computer programming. And still, most schools in this country, or, or really in any country, uh, including Canada, don't give students the most basic exposure that I got when I was little. And the opportunity that I'm living is one that most kids will never unlock in their lives if they don't get the same access in school. Great. Uh, our next question is from Galileo STEM Academy in Idaho. What types of problems or challenges did you come across when you created Hour of Code? I don't know. Okay, try it again. What types of problems or challenges did you come across when you created Hour of Code? Um, when we created Hour of Code, by far, uh, the hardest problem was how little time we had. Um, you know, the idea for the Hour of Code uh, basically gelled together after many months of, you know, we're trying to figure out what could we do that everybody could participate in because, you know, 15,000 schools had reached out to Code.org at that point saying, we want your help bringing computers. All these politicians and celebrities and people just want to help us. And we weren't sure what we could do that could engage all the schools and all the people. And then the idea for an app code came together uh, June of 2013. In so we had five and a half months to put together. Uh, at that point, I think there was maybe three or four of us at the code. So we, um, it's, it wasn't just things we needed to do. We wanted to do all these cool tutorials. We wanted to you know, recruit all these schools to participate. We wanted to get the president of the United States of us. So by far the hardest problem was uh, a few people we had and hiring those people quickly enough and getting them on board and managing an incredibly tight time schedule. Um, but one thing we learned, actually there's two things we learned. One was that by setting an incredibly high goal, uh, you know, we, we shot for the, you know, we figured let's shoot for the moon and reach the stars, which is the opposite of how most people, we set the goal of reaching 10 million students in one week. And that was such a big goal that it got a lot of people behind us. Uh, and the other thing we learned is that you know, because computer science education and learning to code is something that everybody supports, uh, even the most ridiculous requests we, we made of people, uh, you know, people came through for us. So you know, even that first hour of code, Google promoted it on their homepage. Uh, and we only had to ask once, and that happened. Or you know, the way the hour of code has been put into every single Apple store, people have asked me, how did you get them to do that? Uh, it was actually the opposite. They asked us if they could do that. It was their idea, um, which is really unheard of because you know most people don't get that much sort of free promotion and, and partnership from Apple. Uh, and really, we realize it's such a movement that everybody wants to help, and that made it much more successful. Great. Uh, our next question comes from Minnesota from North Elementary School. How was the concept of Code.org created? Um, so the original concept of Code.org was very different than where we are today. Uh, when I started at the time, it was basically just a hobby. And all I wanted to do was make one video that explains that computer programming and computer science and coding are important, and that you know our schools should be teaching it and our, our students should be learning it. Uh, and this was kind of. I wasn't working at the time, and this was just sort of a side project for me. 
uh, and I recruited some of the best people that I uh, knew or that I had contacts to in the tech industry to help. So people like Bill Gates, the, the founder of Microsoft and the wealthiest man in the world, or Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, or Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, uh, or you know, a bunch of these people I knew from working with them. And then there were a handful of celebrities that I managed to call their agents and said, you know, I'm, I'm doing this thing with these other people. Can they be part of it? And my only goal in life was just to make this video. It took a few, you know, about six months. We'll put the video out, out on a website, and then that was it. Um, there really wasn't a plan for what we do next. Um, but as the video came, came together, I realized I can't just put this video on my own personal YouTube page, and you know, it's got all these important people on it. It kind of needs a website. Uh, so I need to have a website that the video goes on. So you know, I, I managed to get the name code.org and then put the video on the website. Uh, and then having this video with all these important people on this website with such a great name created such a stir that a million, sorry, 10 million people looked at it in a week. And uh, 15,000 schools reached out and said, you know, can you help us bring this to our, to our school? Uh, and at that point, literally, it was just me in a video on this like really bare bones website. But when we had uh, you know, the attention of 10 million people and 15,000 schools wanting computer science, that's really what inspired me. And it's, it's really actually all the educators who wanted to bring computer science to their students and to their classrooms. That was the inspiration for making what is today the current code.org. Uh, and you know, since then, I've been basically building a team, hiring people, building all the pieces of what code.org does, whether it's the tutorials, the hour of code, everything. Great, and that's how I ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> Laura was actually, I think, maybe, you know, she was one of the first three people I met back then and convinced to join us. <laughs> Our next question comes from Woodfin Elementary School in North Carolina. Go ahead. How old were you when you started learning about computers? So I was 10 years old. Uh, so I think I was in fourth grade at that time, uh, which is, you know, most people think super early, but I think, uh, you know, as we've shown with the Hour of Code, it's not early. That's like the right time for people to learn. Uh, and back when I started, the programming language I used was called BASIC on a computer called the Commodore 64. Uh, and back then, computers were kind of bigger. It was like this really big thing that didn't, they didn't have a mouse. They didn't have uh, color screens, uh, it, you know, Programming wasn't nearly as much fun because you couldn't make really cool things. Uh, but still, the ability to tell a computer what to do and have it do it for you was really exciting. Uh, and you know, there's a particular magic that you sense when you tell a computer to do one thing, and then you tell it, can you do that a thousand times? And it does it a thousand times instantly. And then you instantly realizing that a computer can do something for you millions of times just by adding a few more zeros on the number. Uh, gives you just a real sense of power that you know there's nowhere else in the world or no other way that you can say, you know, I want a million of something and you get it with instantaneous reaction. And I think that was one of the lies about the power of these platforms. Great. Um, and our next question comes from Tills Elementary School in Arkansas. Okay. Um, we've seen a significant interest in computer science since you became the Hour of Code Initiative. And if the trend continues, where do you see coding in 10 years? Um, so the question is, where will I see coding in 10 years? You know, my goal and the goal of code.org is that every school should teach computer science. Uh, and you know, the people should be learning this field. Uh, you know, we don't do an hour of math uh, once a year or an hour of science once a year. You have like math all the time and, and science hopefully all the time or English reading writing these are things that are just part of school uh, but computer science and coding aren't part of school and it's not like somebody's decided that they're not allowed to be part of school it's just that they're kind of new most of what you learn in school is the same exact thing everybody's been learning for 150 years you know math hasn't changed in a thousand years the basics of multiplication and addition or subtraction or division those things have existed for as long as humanity's existed. Uh, it's not like somebody invented that or, or came up with it. It's just counting. And the English language also hasn't changed too much. It's changed in, thousand, in the last thousand years, but in the last hundred years, it hasn't changed very much. And so people have been teaching the same things as ever. 
uh, but computer programming, computers have only been around, you know, less than a hundred years, about sixty years, and computer programming at, at the level at which a you know ten-year-old can do it has only been possible for about thirty years. And one 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 thing that means is most of your teachers, most of your parents have never done it themselves, and, and most teachers, parents, adults are actually a little bit scared of it. They think I'm not smart enough to do it uh, because it's new and different, and I never learned it. So if I never learned it you know, maybe I can't do it myself. So the, the real challenge to getting this taught in schools is to the adults, the parents, all recognize that even if it's too scary for them or too new for them or foreign for them, that it's not scary or foreign for today's children. Um, where we want to be in 10 years is that every school should teach computer science just like they teach math or English or science or biology. It should be part of the full school system, not just this thing you do one hour a year. Uh, you know. The one hour is just, you know, it's a great way to have fun, and it's a great way to realize how much more than one hour there is to learn, and it will go beyond one hour and do much more learning, whether it's using our tutorials or somebody else's. Great, and uh, we have a question from our Twitter feed. Uh, this is from a student in Denver, Colorado, and they want to know, what's something you'd want to make yourself with code? Um, that's a great question. Uh, so there's two things I want to make myself with code, uh, and they're both pretty recent. Uh, one is uh, for my staff for the code.org team, I was hoping to make a Christmas card using our artist. Uh, you know, we have this little thing, whether it's the Anna and Elsa version or the, the default artist version where you give commands to draw squares or circles or pentagons or stars. Um, and I wanted to have that draw a Christmas tree. And the particular challenge I wanted to give myself was to make it draw a fractal Christmas tree, where you know each branch itself is a little Christmas tree, and each branch of the branch is a little Christmas tree, um, which is a little bit harder to do. So I'm going to need to maybe take some time over the Christmas break to do that. Uh, the other thing uh, I wanted to make, you know, we've recently made this thing called App Lab, which makes it really easy to make apps. And at the Code.org offices, we have a ping pong table. Uh, Right, right now in front of me, but there's a wall next to the ping pong table where everybody has written their scores of who beat whom, uh, and it's literally written on the wall, and we're running out of space on the wall. Uh, so I was hoping to make an app so we can track the ping pong scores on si inside the code.org team to see who has the most wins and, and who's at the top of the ranks. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks, Hadi, for joining us uh, today in all these classrooms, and we just want to give you a big round of applause. Thank you so much. I want to say closing. I wanted to say something in closing before I leave, which is whether it's the students or the teachers, please don't stop with one hour. Uh, for all of you teachers over there, I'm sure you can you can look on code.org. We have tons of follow-on curriculum that you can take. And if you haven't, those of you who are in elementary school in particular, we have these great training workshops that are one-day workshops for teachers uh, to basically learn how to go in curriculum for your students. And for the students whose teachers don't decide to do this, uh, first of all, ask them to do it and tell them you want to do more coding. Um, but if, if you don't get to do it in the classroom, I hope you can convince your mom or dad to go do it at home on a computer at home. So uh, thank you so much, and please spread the word. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Hadi.